The question now becomes, is are we in second normal form? Now you might recall that second normal form means that there are no partial dependencies. And I said to you at that time that it's difficult to understand what I mean by a partial dependency until you get an example to look at. Well, let's look at this example now. What we're talking about in a partial dependency is when we have a concatenated key, which is two pieces, is it possible that a non-keyed attribute is only dependent on one portion of it as opposed to the entire elements that were put together. Before I go on, let me explain to you really what's going on here. Suppose you had an order 100 that had three items, item A, item B, and item C. You would have one record in this file called order number 100, and you'd have three here. You'd have 100A, 100B, and 100C. The 100 repl representing the order number and the letter with the item number being A, B, and C. Notice that each one is unique. So I maintain the uniqueness and the relationship. So if I wanted to find the items that are associated with all of the orders, I would go to this database and find 100. But now let's say I have order number 200, and 200 only has two items, B and R. Then I'd have 200B and 200R. Note that although I'm calling this number, I'm showing it in terms of letters because it's easy to understand. Notice now that everything is still unique, but what's also very powerful is the fact that if I wanted to search in SQL on locating all of the orders that ordered item B, I could do that. So this is truly what concatenation means. For the purposes of a primary key, we've taken these two elements and we've joined them. And that's what concatenation means, it, uh, appending them. Now, what we're saying here, is it possible that any one of these elements is not what they call wholly dependent? Wholly dependent meaning both parts of the key. Well, let's look at that test. We'll find some interesting things. Is item name dependent on the order and the item, or just one of them? Is it not true that the item name is dependent only on the item number? Indeed, it is true. Therefore, we could say that item name is partially dependent on the entire key. It's only dependent on this piece of it. And therefore, it is a violation of second normal form. I can now determine that this database design is not in second normal form. Now let's go back to our rules. The rule says that whenever I fail a normal form, I must create a new entity. So I will indeed do that. The question again becomes, what is the primary key of that new entity? Well, the primary key, and this is another rule to remember, is always the portion of the key that, was, that caused the violation. Because item name was only dependent on item number, item number is the primary key of the new table. So let's put that there. And thus, this becomes items. Now, suppose you didn't do this and create this table. If you just look at this table, look at the following integrity problem. Suppose you create a new item on January the 1st. Nobody has ordered it yet. You go down to the system people and ask them to add item Z. Well, if you look at this database design without this entity, you cannot add item Z unless someone has ordered it. Do you see this? It's very, very important. This database design, without being in second normal form, restricts you from adding an item that hasn't been ordered, something that has tremendous amounts of integrity problem. Incidentally, if you think this has never happened or people have never violated it, think of the following issue. How would you get around this if this was the way it was designed? Well, most often, people would create what is known as a dummy order, 99999. 8, 8, 8, 8, 8. 
How many times have we seen the systems in which they create an order simply to get in a new item? And what does that result in? Terrible integrity problems, particularly when you're using SQL and going directly to the database as opposed to the program. Remember I mentioned to you that whenever you violate a normal form, you have an integrity problem. And very often, you'll write programs to save you. Well, let's look at that. I create an order number 99999. I make a program change in the order entry program or reporting program, which says if the order number is 99999, ignore it. Well, that's fine until I get an SQL programmer that comes along and writes a query and goes directly to that data. Perhaps you're not with the company anymore. I've got all kinds of significant integrity problems by going around that program that you wrote, which is part of what SQL is providing me to do or allowing me to do. So that's the essence of the problem. But we're not finished here. We now have created a new entity, and the question is, what do we do with these non-keyed attributes? Remember, they always follow their primary key. Well, we know already that item name is wholly dependent on the item number. We know that. We tested it. It's what caused the failure. Item price is also dependent just on the item. But what about item quantity? Isn't it true that the quantity of the item ordered is both dependent not only on the item itself, but also the order of that item? Indeed, that is true. So be careful, because in this situation, item quantity is what they call wholly dependent. It is dependent on every part of the concatenation. So it indeed stays home. An item amount is also dependent on the order. So what we have here is not everybody going to the new entity. Some stay, some go, and each element has to be tested. You can see here that we're truly examining the relationship of one entity, uh, excuse me, with one element with another. I now have three entities. So as you can see, when I started, and I thought that I only had one orders database, by applying normalization, I am beginning to create more. Incidentally, another name for this is decomposition. I'm really breaking down the data into multiple dimensions. Now that we've reached this point, there's something else I want to say which can help a practitioner. You will note that second normal form is only applied to an entity that already has a concatenated primary key. Therefore, if you have entities such as the orders, we never applied second normal form check because it didn't have a concatenation. So the following rule applies. If an entity is in first normal form and it does not have a concatenated primary key, it is already in second normal form. Another word, way of saying this is you only perform second normal form test on entities with concatenated primary keys. And one last thing to remember is any time you fail first normal form, you will always test for second normal form because a first normal form failure always creates a concatenated primary key, and thereby you will at least be required to test for it. These are important things to remember. As you get into large database designs and you have hundreds, if not thousands of tables, you want to be able to minimize the amount of testing that you do to finalize your database design.